And once again, welcome back to Philly Sports Spotlight. This is a good-looking fella here is Jersey Man Magazine editor-in-chief Ken Dunnick. He's also a former pro football player, okay? He played for the Eagles, and he also played in the USFL for the Philadelphia Stars, and he's got these three big rings, but enough about that. We've already talked ad nauseum about what the Eagles should do during the draft tomorrow night. Now, the other thing that Eagle fans like to do every year is also look at the upcoming schedule, which was officially released this week with times, dates, and all that stuff. And I want to go over that, beginning, of course, with the Eagles away schedule. Tell me what you see when you look at this. Yeah, I think overall this schedule is pretty difficult. You know, they're matched against the AFC West, and you can see they open against at Washington, and if RG3 is healthy, that's going to be a challenge for them. Of course, we know, you know, Denver and Peyton Manning and the New York Giants. Tampa Bay just signing Darrell Reefus is going to be a challenge. You know, Oakland may, may be uh, one of the easier games in the schedule going to Green Bay. I mean, that's a tough away schedule, in my opinion. Yeah, that, we talked about the very first game of the year is a twofer. When I say twofer, it's a division game and a conference game. So you win that game, you're off to a very, very good start. And you saw at the end of the season, they uh, finish up at Dallas. So they start and begin with a, with a divisional opponent. All right, how about the, uh, the home schedule for this year? And I know there's one game on there that every Eagle fan uh, circled. Is it? Do you need me to point it out for you, or do well, you know? I do not. Of okay. course, I'm going to be riveted to the uh, screen when Andy Reid comes back to Philadelphia. One thing to mention about this schedule: if you look at the away game uh, that opens on September 9th against Washington, they then play the Chargers at home on the 15th and the Chiefs at, uh, at the, on the 19th. That's three games in 11 days to start your right. season. Now, the challenge for that is a new staff trying to implement a new system and having to play three games that quickly could uh, present you know a challenge to the, to the Eagles and their and these young players and one other thing about the schedule the schedule is pretty much uh, symbiotic with where their Eagles are drafting the fact that there's a lot of one o'clock games on that schedule only one Monday night game tells you that uh, that the TV networks don't have a lot of uh, interest in watching the Philadelphia Eagles this year but that could change by the end of the year and they could become part of a flex schedule listen before I let you go I need you to just comment real quick because do, when the Eagles are going through their whole selecting a coach process uh, Chip Kelly bowed out and he went back to Oregon, but then he came back. And a lot of people said he came back because they knew that Oregon was going to be in trouble with the NCAA. You did some research this week because the NCAA is coming down on the University of Oregon. What'd you find out? Yeah, there. You know, the Oregon violations, in my opinion, uh, stem around a, them using a recruiting service, which is legal, but they were supposed to demand written reports, and, and apparently they got oral ones. So, in my estimation, that's a relatively minor infraction. I don't think it would have been enough for Chip Kelly to leave Oregon for the Eagles. You know, there was a change of heart there, but uh, you know. A lot of times, you know, coaches are looking for the next challenge, and this is a plum job. Can you imagine Chip Kelly being a coach that takes the Eagles to a Super Bowl uh, championship? I mean, there'll be a statue outside of uh, the link for sure. So I think Chip is a good guy. I think he's accepting the challenge, and hopefully we have the right man for the job. And the key thing there is the players seem to love him. You know, he's, he's a young coach, too. He's got a lot of energy running around out there. So the players right now seem to be adapting well. And we'll see what happens when uh, when training camp starts. He's not about, you know, a lot of hitting and all that stuff. He's a lot about conditioning and training uh, room work. Listen, as usual, Mr. Dunnick, I want to thank you for your contributions, which are always on point. But I got to ask you, when you're not here with me hanging out, what do you do in real life? I'm a little busy these days uh, publishing Jersey Man magazine. There you see our new cover with uh, Ilya Brizgalov. And, you know, I do want to make a special announcement. We are very proud. We have a great staff of writers, some of the biggest names in Philadelphia write for Jersey Man Magazine. And tonight I can announce that one of the very best, in my opinion, Bill Lyon, the Enquirer columnist, is joining us as a regular contributor. So we're very proud about that and want to welcome Bill to the Jersey Man yeah, family. Yeah, that's a nice steal right there. Good luck with that. And again, thank you very much. And, uh, I'd like to see you back here next week, but I know you got other matters to take care of. We'll, got, we'll talk a, about the draft after the draft. He's got, a, what do you got? I got a date with a golf ball next Char week. But so it's a charity event, charity. so I'm going to let you off the hook for that one. Exactly. Okay, thank you, Ken. Good to be here. All right, we'll talk after the show. Right. Okay, will the real Doc Halliday report to the pitcher's mound? Which, of course, is what he's expected to do tonight when the Phils continue their series with the Pirates. But talk about an about face. Remember those two dismal starts that Doc had to start the season? There they are, games one and two. I mean, look at those ERAs, 14.73 and 13.5. And he didn't even last that long. Four innings in, uh, in that one game and then 3.1 in the other. Well, look, here's your turning round right here. He's starting now to look like the Doc Halliday that we have all come to know and love. He's pitching more innings. He's getting more pitches in. And his velocity, his velocity, which is the key thing with him, is actually starting to change. And you know? Some of these older guys just have to learn to switch things up a little bit in order to succeed. 
That's our Phillies report for tonight. Now, since our last show, both the Sixers and Flyers seasons came to their respective merciful ends. The Sixers by virtue of simply running out of games and the Flyers, well, they're still playing, but they're eliminated from playoff competition. Now, as far as we know, the orange and black intend to retain the services of their head coach, Peter LaViolette. The Sixers, though, once again, find themselves looking for a new head coach after Doug, Doug Collins has decided he wants to spend more time with his family. This, this, this job is, uh, you got to pour your heart and soul into it every single second. And uh, uh, this city, I love this city, and I love the 76ers. I've been with this organization for 40 years. And I just, you know, uh, you know, being away Christmas, being away, I've got five grandkids now. It's interesting how over the last year, uh, you know, I had my granddaughter born on the fifth, uh, fifth game of the, of the game against Boston. You know, I had my son and my grandson Ryan break uh, break his second leg here in, in about the last two years. Uh, my son just got the job at Northwestern, and uh, there's a lot of things I want to enjoy. And I think it's every man's dream to be able to live that life that you work so hard to try to live. You know, it really is a shame because I think a lot of people wanted to see Doug Collins uh, succeed here, uh, buying and things, some other things. It just wasn't going to happen. All right, it is time to take, you heard the music. It is to, you can play it. It is time to take another pause for the cause. When we return, Mike McCoy will uh, tell you about the story that it's better late than never when it comes to the story of one Hugh Campbell. Tonight's Philly segment was sponsored by Virtua Joint Replacement Institute, the home with a quad sparing knee replacement. For more information, call 855-VIRTUA-3.